Are you a new coach who wants to learn what it takes to build a coaching business, a successful coaching business? Or maybe you are an NLP practitioner, you've just learned NLP and you want to learn what it takes, what you need to do, how to actually incorporate NLP into your coaching business. Well, in this video, I am going to walk you through the exact steps, the exact process, everything that you need to know and do in order to build a successful NLP coaching business. And even if you don't know NLP, even if you haven't learned NLP, you can still take the steps that I'm going to share with you and apply it to your coaching business and use it to help you build a successful coaching business. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Brooke from creativemindacademy.com and on this channel, I make videos about coaching, NLP and hypnosis and mindset tips for entrepreneurs. If you like this video and if you do learn something from it, I would really appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up so that I know that you got something from it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get all of the coaching and mindset and NLP videos that I post. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps that it takes to build a successful NLP coaching business. And I'm gonna be really, really honest with you because I feel like that is what we need more of in the coaching industry. We need more honesty, we need more truth, we need more authenticity and more transparency. So that is what I'm going to give you in this video. I'm gonna break down each of the steps. I'm gonna tell you why it's important. I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. So I would suggest if you want to grab a pen and paper, you can also save this video so you can come back to it later because the steps that I'm gonna give you are the juicy stuff. They're the juicy ones. So without rambling on too much, I'm going to dive right into the steps. So our first step, our first tip in building a successful NLP coaching business is to learn NLP from a company that values your ongoing success, your success into the future after you've done your training with them. It's really, really important. There are so, so many NLP training companies. I've done the research. I've trained with quite a few different companies, not just one. And a lot of them I have noticed teach, they do the teaching part, and then you're off on your own. When it comes to learning NLP and really integrating everything that you have learned and implementing it and incorporating it into your business, ongoing support is really, really important because there are going to be times where maybe you're working with a client and you're unsure of what to do or how to proceed forward. And you want to make sure that you have someone there that you can go back to and ask someone who is qualified, not just other students in the program, right? Someone who's actually qualified, who has had lots of experience actually working with clients. That's something that's really important. You want to make sure that the trainer that you're learning from actually has real world, ex real world experience using this, these techniques with their clients, that they haven't just be, been trained to be a trainer and haven't actually had the experience of using these techniques. A lot of training companies are advertised under the name of a well-known trainer, but they have assistant trainers doing the trainings. Another thing that you really want to pay attention to is making sure that your trainer, the person that you're going to be learning from, is committed to their own education, committed to their own ongoing education and learning about NLP, learning coaching practices from other companies, from other people and furthering their own education because the world of NLP is evolving. There's more stuff happening, more things to learn all the time. It's, it's an evolutionary thing. It, it, it hasn't ended. So it's important that you choose to work with a company that is continuing their own education and their commitment to their students' success, which, which is exactly what we do in the Creative Coach Method. I am the trainer of the Creative Coach Method. I will always be the trainer. I have assisting coaches, but they help assisting the students with other things. I am always the trainer and I am committed to my ongoing support. I am constantly learning NLP from other people. Even the same stuff that I've already learned, I want to learn it from other people because other people have different ways of teaching, different ways of sharing, different insights, and things that I know will benefit my students and give them a well-rounded 
understanding and experience of NLP. So there's a few things that you should think about and consider when you are deciding what company that you want to work with for your NLP training. Some things you want to ask are, will I be able to ask questions in the future? And will I be able to get answers from someone who is qualified, not just other students in the course? You want to know how experienced your trainer is in using these techniques using their coaching skills with actual clients. And you wanna know that your trainer is actively engaged in furthering their own education and learning more about coaching and NLP. The second thing that you want to make sure you're doing in order to build a successful NLP coaching business is to practice your techniques. Practice the things that you are learning. This is one of the things that I honestly should suggest to my students all the time. I tell them to practice alone, practice with their friends, practice with each other because Learning NLP, learning these techniques, isn't about memorizing the techniques. It's about practicing them to the point that you feel incredibly confident using them so that when you do start working and using these techniques with paying clients, that you are super, super confident. You go into the session confident in yourself, confident in your ability to help your client achieve their goals and the things that they are working towards. It's not about memorizing the things. I always say this to my students, whenever I'm working with clients now, I still have my practitioner manual, which is the book that has all of the techniques in it. This book right here, this is our creative coach practitioner manual. I still have my practitioner manual with me when I am working with clients because my focus is always on my clients. My focus is not trying to remember what I need to say or what we're doing in the technique. I've got that all in the book. I don't need to try and remember it. So my focus is 100% on my clients. So practicing your techniques helps you have that confident confidence in your sessions. Practicing your techniques helps you not have to think about what you're doing because you're going to practice it so often you know exactly what you need to do. There's a couple of NLP techniques that are kind of involved. Swish pattern, I use my hands when I'm doing swish pattern, there's a few steps. We kind of repeat things quite a lot. In these kinds of techniques, I want to know that my brain, I, I've done it so many times that my brain knows what to do. I have the book here in front of me. If I am, if I get lost or stuck or like I forget where I'm at, I never want to try and um, have to remember too much. I want to give my whole focus to my clients. So practice your technique as much as possible. I suggest having your phone. So set your phone up in front of you and record, like video record yourself doing the techniques, doing the things that you need to practice so you can watch it back and really start getting it into your mind and imprinting it in your mind. Practice with other students that are in your course in the Creative Coach Method. Our students actually get together. It's really cool. They practice on Zoom calls together and have success partner sessions and, and connect that way, which I think is super amazing because they're actually able to give each other feedback as well and talk about the techniques. So when you practice with a friend, it's really awesome and you're the coach and they're the client and you can practice and, and help someone experience NLP, the benefit of practicing with another student or someone else who knows NLP is that they can give you feedback. They can say, okay, really liked how you did this. I think you can improve on this thing. I wasn't sure here. That's interesting how you did this. I liked how you did that. And you can kind of collaborate there. So practice as much as possible. The other thing about practicing with people is that it can help you get testimonials. So when you're working with your friends, when you are practicing with your the other students in the program, you can actually get testimonials for the techniques. And this is a great thing for you to be able to put on social media, put on your website. I am in favor of working for free for a little bit. I did this when I first started coaching, just a few sessions. You don't have to work for free forever. You don't have to give your client like a 12 month package for free. Just practice a few sessions with some, some pretend clients, like maybe people that you don't know. If you can find them in Facebook groups or on Instagram, you can put an offer out just for a few people and get testimonials that way. It's gonna help you boost your confidence in these techniques because I'm 
know what it's like to first learn NLP and you learn a lot and you learn some really, really amazing tools and you just wanna share them with people. It's just important that you're super confident and this is gonna help you when you do come to sell your offers and share your offers. This is gonna help you say, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing. I know how to use these techniques. I know that they are life changing. The third point here of building a successful NLP coaching business is to choose a niche. Now I know this is like up in the air for a lot of people. Some people say you need one, some people say you don't need one, whatever. My advice here is to choose a niche. It doesn't have to be perfect right from the get-go. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to stick with the same one the whole time. But what choosing a niche allows you to do is to speak directly to the people that you want to help. You're going to speak differently to millennials who are trying to get up the career ladder and building their life and maybe feeling a little burnt out and maybe you want to start their own night side hustle. You're going to speak to them differently than you're going to speak to a new mom who wants to get fit and figure out how to start working out again after having a baby. You're gonna share different things. Your reels are gonna be different. Your posts are gonna share about different topics. You're gonna talk about different things on your podcast. So this is what I mean by choosing a niche. Figure out generally the kinds of people that you like speaking to. You're gonna probably speak to men who want help speaking to women differently than you're gonna to speak to that new mom who wants to get fit. So that is what I mean by choosing a niche. It's gonna really help you connect more with your ideal clients. It's gonna give you guidance on what to talk about, what topics to talk about, rather than just saying, here's some mindset tips that can help you. You can direct it specifically to, hey, men, here's some mindset shifts that are going to help you feel more confident when you are on a date with a woman. That is going to speak to someone so much better. You're going to get in front of the actual people who want what you have to offer instead of trying to help everyone. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see. I see a lot of mistakes, but one of the biggest mistakes I see is coaches just giving out general like coaching advice and it's like, who is this even for? I don't know what you actually do. I don't know what you do. I don't know who you help. I don't know what the point of this post is. So choose a niche. Now I have a niche formula. This is like very basic, but grab a pen and paper if you need it. And we're gonna go through the niche formula. The first thing is to make a list of the things you know and like to do. Things that you know how to do and things that you like to do. Make them things that you know and like to do at the same time. Maybe not just know how to do or just like to do. Things that you know and like to do. Step two is to go through that list and pick out some things that you think people would pay to have help figuring out how to do themselves. What do you think on the list is valuable enough to other people that they would want to actually pay for? Out of that list, pick one of the things that combines both of those first things. So pick one of the things that you know to do, you like to do, and that you think people will pay for. Talk about that and share about that. That is your niche create content on that, podcasts, YouTube videos, Instagram posts, reels, this is what you're going to talk about. Now, the thing with niches is you can start out talking about whatever you want and then move on from there. If you're like, actually, I wanna shift a little bit, you can shift, that's totally okay. The fourth thing is build a community. Now, this should really be happening all the way through. Pick your niche or what you think will end up being your niche. You know, you can start at experimenting, but this is the thing that you need to do right from the beginning is build your community. Start sharing, talking about how people are going to benefit from working with you. Talk about the benefits of NLP, of if you have any other modalities like hypnosis, time techniques, EFT. Start sharing about these techniques and how they can help your specific ideal clients that are in your niche. 
start talking about how time techniques can potentially help the mom who wants to get fit or the millennial who wants to start a side hustle. Like start sharing things that are specific to your niche. Talk about the things that you know and how, how, how they can benefit your client. How is your idle client's life going to be changed from working with you? You really want to focus on the how and this is exactly what your idol client's going to need to hear in order to know that the things that you have to share are important to them the things that you have to share are going to benefit them a lot of people don't know what nlp is they don't know what hypnosis is and when it comes down to it they don't care what they are people only care about how their lives are going to change. So you don't even necessarily need to entirely focus on, I am an NLP coach and I use NLP and I use hypnosis because people don't care. People only care about the, how they're going to be impacted, the benefits that they are going to experience. So talk about the benefits of NLP. You can talk about the fact that you use it in your business, share success stories, share testimonials, share things like that. But don't get too caught up in that I am an NLP coach. I use NLP because people don't care about that. They only care about how you can help them. What can you help them achieve? How is their life going to be different on the other side? And get as specific as you can with that. The fifth step is to have a clear client success path and a clear profit strategy. So your client success path is the journey that your client takes inside your course or inside your coaching program to get from where they are now to where they want to be, where they are at the beginning of your course and where they are at where they want to be at the end of your course. What do they need to know along the way? So this is going to be like the little steps that are inside your course, the different modules or the different things that you go over in your coaching program. This it's on that level where your client success path is inside your one specific course or the one specific coaching program that you use. Your profit strategy is your overall step. So this is your entire product suite. So it could start out with a low priced offer that's low commitment, low low time commitment, low cost commitment for your ideal client and low commitment for you as well in terms of what you need to create in order to put this together to your higher end mastermind, retreat, whatever that is. So maybe you just have three steps in your profit strategy. Maybe you have five steps. It's going to be different for, for everyone, but it's going to kind of go along a journey that makes sense from right where your very, very, very first customer ideal client comes in from even like knowing that they have maybe a potential challenge that they want to work on something right at the beginning of their journey, all the way through your steps and your profit strategy are going to guide your client through a logical sequence of steps to get them to their end point. So for example, as a business coach, for me, it could be the first thing in my profit strategy is helping someone find their niche, figure out what kind of coach they want to be, something like that. Then the next step could be learning how to start an online business, maybe a, a longer program, a six week course. And then the next step would be the creative coach method, which is where you learn about NLP and hypnosis and all of the coaching tools that are inside the creative coach method certification program. Then maybe from that, we have a mastermind or a master level training, a level two training. And then we have a mastermind. So that is the profit strategy for each course or coaching or element inside my profit strategy inside that we have a different client success path for each thing so you need to make sure that you're clear on both your client success path and your profit strategy and our sixth and final point here in building creating your successful nlp coaching business is to 
tell people that you have something to offer. This is the number one thing that I see so many coaches making. It was the biggest mistake that I made when I first started coaching was not telling people that I had an offer. I thought that just sharing mindset tips and stuff on Instagram was going to be enough and just saying I was a coach would make people want to work with me but it doesn't. If you want people to work with you, you have to put an offer out there and you have to ask them to participate. So you have to say, I have this coaching program. This is who it's for. This is what you're gonna get on the other side. If you have questions, you can join here. You can message me here. Let's get on a call. This is how much it costs. This is the sales page. We start on this day. Are you ready to join? I'm so excited. Like you need to talk about it often, of so consistently. You need to talk about it frequently. I still have people who know me who are like, they don't know what I do, but I post it on social media all the time. But most people, I'm telling you now, most people are not listening. They do not know, they do not know. So say it as many times as you can. Obviously throwing in like the non-sales stuff as well is important, but tell people that you have an offer that they can that they can buy or sign up for or join or whatever it is. Make it easy for them to join. Don't make people jump through hoops to sign up for your course or your coaching. Make the steps as simple as possible, but you need to be selling and sharing more often. And selling doesn't have to be sign up for my thing. Here, sign up for my coaching. Selling can be sharing a testimonial or sharing a success story or sharing something that you just experienced with a client and how you helps them get through the thing or what you're working on next that's going to help your clients right it doesn't have to be this whole big salesy thing you just need to make sure you are sharing and share often and make it super easy and super simple for people to join you. Okay, so this is a long video. It went a little bit longer than I expected, but I'm really excited to share these things with you. Please let me know what you think. And of course, if you are looking to join an NLP certification, we have the Creative Coach Method. It is open enrollment, so you can definitely join now. You'll learn NLP, hypnosis, time techniques, EFT and life and success coaching and you get certified in all of these. We have an amazing community. I honestly love all of the students. I'm so excited. Every single we have group calls and those are honestly my favorite days of the week when we get to have our group calls and connect and we share wins and we talk about NLP and all of the amazing stuff. So if you would like to learn more about the creative coach method, you can head to Created Mind Academy dot com slash certification. I'll put the link in the description. You can also message me on Instagram. I'm at rockalexander.co. So with all of these steps, I would love to know what you thought. Let me know if these were helpful to you. And if you have any of your own that you would add in, you can definitely do that as well. I would love to hear from you, your input and what has worked for you. For now, that is it for me and I will see you in our next video.